Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the immunology lectures and uh, so uh, you have got introduced already to some bit of uh, the T cell uh, development as well as the antibody structure, the gene, uh, the gene rearrangement uh, for the antibody heavy chain and the light chain uh, production. So, the v, uh, VDJ recombination and all these things. So, you have uh, got a fair idea about all these things and so, uh, we will be starting uh, in this, this section of uh, the lecture series, we will be starting with uh, the B cell uh, development. So, uh, the B cells which are the primary components of the humoral branch of the immunity the B cells, they develop in the bone marrow. The main uh, place where they develop is the bone marrow. And uh, as we, I also told in my previous lectures uh, that the B cell, the humoral branch of the immunity, so uh, that, that is activated and in the, uh, the, the, the lymphoid organs like the lymph node for example, where it meets the antigen and then there is activation, then uh, there is uh, all this uh, class switching, the somatic hypermutation, the class switching of the antibodies, all these things occur and then finally, mm, uh, they start producing, they, they start to differentiate there. So, there is the differentiation and it differentiates to produce uh, the plasma cells and the mm, memory B cells. So, the memory cells and the plasma cells are produced. And then the plasma cells are the they, they have the secretory antibodies, so they start secreting the antibodies. And uh, then these antibodies can function uh, in different ways, so they can either lead to neutralization, they can lead to opsonization, and many other functions. So, where does these B cells come from? And you have also learnt about the uh, T cells. So the T cells, the the cell mediated part of the immunity, so the adaptive immunity. Uh, we can grossly divide into the humoral branch and the cell mediated branch and the humoral branch is mainly uh, the B cell mediated branch, uh, the antibody mediated and uh, the T cell mediated, the cell mediated where you have the T cells and the T cells they develop in the thymus. So, they, they, they come as the thymocytes and then they develop in the thymus with the help of the thymic epithelial cells. So, all these cells, they originate from a common uh, progenitor. So, they originate from this hematopoietic stem cells and then they have a common uh, uh, multipotent progenitor from where they finally become either a B cell or a T cell. So, at this stage, when it is a still a, uh, like a lymphoid progenitor cell, at this stage it is still not committed to become a B cell or a thymocyte. Then there are certain signalings that occurs that would commit it that is a, a population of a part of this population will go for B cells and a part of this population will develop into thymocytes and they will move to the thymus where they will uh, develop. So, and how does this B cells they develop into specifically B cells. So, B cells means they will produce the antibodies and that means they would require the, the recombination process which allows the rearrangement of the V, D and the J gene fragments. So, this rearrangement process has to occur in the B cells. So, all these processes occurs primarily the site of action is the bone marrow. So, now if we look into the lineage of these cells where they start from in the bone marrow. So, they basically start from the common hematopoietic stem cells, we call them the hematopoietic stem cells. So, the 
hematopoietic stem cells and these hematopoietic stem cells they then develop into the multipotent progenitor cell the multipotent progenitor cell the multipotent progenitor then develops into a lymphoid progenitor and still it is not actually committed to become a b cell or a t cell so it's still the lymphoid progenitor and this lymphoid progenitor can actually develop into either a pre nk cell a natural killer cell so this will finally develop into an nk cell or a natural killer cell it can also develop into a pro b cell that is a progenitor b cell in also a thymocyte. Now, this thymocyte will finally go into the thymus and then it will uh, develop into a T cell. And this progenitor B cell will finally uh, develop into a uh, mature B cell and this maturation process so, it will finally become a mature B cell and this maturation process actually occurs within the bone marrow. So, this is very important how these B cells they develop. Now, this B cell has three steps in the development. So, the first step is the maturation of the development, uh, development stage. So, they mature into a matured B cell. What is a matured B cell? So, a matured B cell is a B cell which will be producing a, a fully formed receptor on its surface, a B cell receptor that will be comprising of the immunoglobulin as well as a signaling subunit. So, it will develop into a complete uh, matured B cell which can recognize foreign antigens antigens it, it will start developing the antigen uh, specificity and uh, then it will leave the bone marrow. So, then it will go out of the bone marrow and then it will encounter the antigens and then it will go, go from the bone marrow and then it will go to the uh, periphery and then it will finally move to the lymphoid organs and uh, where they will start meeting antigen and then they will get activated. So, then that process is the activation. So, if the first process is the maturation, then it is the activation and then it will start to differentiate. So, I have I have a little bit probably I have discussed in the initial classes uh, in the initial uh, lectures how the B cells uh, they when meet the antigens and with the help of the T helper cells. Uh, after they get activated uh, they differentiate and then there is class switching and they become uh, different they start producing different types of antibodies and they then produce the um, uh, plasma cells and the memory B cells. So, this B cell uh, development this what we have seen here. So, it starts in this uh, bone marrow here and then this B cell then leaves and it glow it goes into the circulation it has to go into the circulation and then it goes to a peripheral lymphoid organ. So, it has to go to a lymphoid organ for example, a lymph node and inside the lymph node this mature B cell which now expresses on its surface the B cell receptor in presence of an antigen there has to be an antigen present in presence of the antigen and with the helper of the T helper cells. So, along with the T H cells the T helper cells 
the T helper cells, they will now develop into either a plasma cell or a memory B cell with the IgG molecules. And then this plasma cell will start secreting the specific antibodies. So, this is the whole uh, kind of the whole story about the B cell. Now, what exactly happens that how this, um, this these progenitor cells or the, the multipotent progenitor cells they become the lymphoid progenitor cells and once from there these lymphoid progenitor cells after that they start getting committed to become a B cell. So, who are the who are the key players in this whole process of the development? So, one of the key players in this whole process or the helpers in this whole process is the bone marrow stromal cells. So, it requires the help of the stromal cells. So, these B cells these, these immature uh, or the lymphoid progenitor cells they adhere on the stromal cells by some cell adhesion molecules. So, the cell adhesion molecules we have discussed uh, very briefly in the in our earlier classes like the, the, the immunoglobulin uh, family of adhesion molecules binding to the integrins, the, the mucin molecules. So, these are all the cell adhesion molecules. Now, these cell adhesion molecules are expressed by different cell types of the immune system including the B cells. So, these B cells uh, uh, these lymphoid progenitor cells they will start to also express this kind of uh, cell addition molecules. So, how does this whole thing start? So, what happens is inside this bone marrow let us see what happens inside a bone marrow and how it develops into a complete So, what happens inside is the initial stage as I told is the the multipotent progenitor cell or we also call it the MPP. So, now this this kind of cells they are not committed and they do not express any receptor on the surface like the B cell receptors on the surface they do not have the B cell receptors on the surface. What they express on the surface is a protein tyro tyrosine kinase receptor which is also known as the FLT3. FLT3. Now, this FLT3 receptor can bind to the FLT3 ligand which is present on the stromal cell. So, let us say this is the stromal cell. And on the surface of the stromal cell, there is this FL3 ligand. So, FLT3 ligand that is present or the ligand that is present on the surface of the stromal cells. Now, once this binding occurs, the cells uh, because this FLT3 is basically this FLT3 is basically a tyrosine kinase receptor. So, it is basically a tyrosine kinase uh, receptor and it starts signaling the round, it starts downstream signaling and there are many changes that occurs in these uh, cells. So, one of the major changes that occurs in these cells is that they start to express a class of cytokine receptors on the surface and then this, these cells become the, so these cells are the MPP or uh, the multipotent progenitors and then they become the lymphoid progenitor cells the lymphoid progenitor. Now, these lymphoid progenitors 
they express on their surface, they start to express on their surface one of the major uh, important cytokine receptors that is the interleukin 7 receptors, the IL7R. And interleukin 7 is one of the very important uh, uh, key players in the whole process of this uh, uh, B cell maturation. And interleukin 7 is actually being produced from this stromal cells. So, this is a stromal cell. So, interleukin 7 is produced from this stromal cell and they can bind to this interleukin 7 receptors and this interleukin 7 has a very big role in the um, uh, maturation and the development of the B cells. So, uh, now once these cells they start to express, so the first stage is uh, expression of the FLT3 tyrosine kinase receptors and binding of the FLT3 to the FLT3 uh, ligand. Uh, uh, which is expressed on the surface of the stromal cells and then you have the interleukin 3 uh, uh, inter sorry interleukin 7 uh, being, being expressed uh, 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 the receptor being expressed on the surface of these lymphoid progenitors. So, now these cells which expresses this IL 7 receptor they are kind of uh, committed to become the B cells. So, they are kind of uh, committed to um, that B cell lineage. So, they will now produce the progenitor B cells, they will now form the progenitor B cells. And uh, there is a third component that is the CXCL12. So, the CXCL12 is uh, basically a chemokine that is also being produced by the stromal cells and they helps to retain this uh, this lymphoid progenitor cells or the and the MPP to remain on the stromal cells. So, because uh, these chemokines are basically the chemoattractants. So, they uh, helps in cell migration and cell attraction, cell to cell attraction. So, CXCL12 has a role to play here which attracts the cell and retains the cell on the stromal cell surface. And then there is the interleukin 7 receptor expression and then kind of uh, these cells which starts expressing the IL 7 receptor, they start to uh, become kind of committed to become the B cell lineage, to have the B cell lineage. So, now the next is once they become the have this IL 7 receptor start to express the IL 7 receptor on the surface then these cells they these cells will then adhere now these cells they will now adhere to the stromal cells so now they will start expressing uh, these uh, cams which are the cell addition molecules. For example, uh, they will start expressing an integrin like molecule the VLA4, VLA4 which is expressed on the surface of this progenitor B cells and that can interact with another CAM or a cell addition molecule which is known as VCAM1. So, CAM is the cell addition molecule. So, this is the VCAM1. So, this VLA4 can interact with this VCAM1 and by that it adheres to the surface of the stromal cell. So, then in this stage the primary uh, thing that occurs in this stage of the pro B cells when it develops into the pro B cells or the progenitor B cells, we also call them the progenitor B cells. This they start to express this VLA4 integrin molecules on the surface, which can then bind to this VCAM1 or a, a class of cell addition molecules, which is also expressed from the stromal cell on the surface of the stromal cell. Now, once this VCAM VLA interaction starts occurring, uh, there is a second interaction that occurs is the uh, the interaction of a factor 
which is also known as the stem cell factor or the SCF that is expressed on the surface of the stromal cell and that it can interact with uh, another tyrosine kinase family of receptor tyrosine kinase which is also known as the C kit K I T the C kit which is expressed on the surface of this pro B cells or the progenitor B cells. Now, once this interaction is very 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 vital once this interaction occurs here this interaction occurs on the stromal cell here then there is a signaling that leads to the maturation and the development of the uh, pro B cells to pre B cells. So, now this pro B cells they become the pre B cells. Now, this pre B cells so mainly the signaling occurs through this SCF to C kit interaction. So, this C kit which is also a tyrosine kinase receptor it interacts with the SCF and SCF is the stem cell factor. So, this interaction basically there is a interaction between these two molecules on the surface so the surface expressing molecules that leads to downstream signaling and that downstream signaling leads to the uh, uh, development of these pro B cells or the progenitor B cells into the pre B cells. So, the main characteristics of the pre B cells is that now the pre B cells they will start to express or have the antibodies or the immunoglobulins on the surface. So, we will come to the uh, developmental stages and how, how what, what exactly happens inside what kind of genetic rearrangement occurs inside we will get to know about that in more details in our next class. Uh, but for the time being we just say um, that the pro B cells after this interaction the VLA4 VCAM1 interaction and the C to SCF interaction they develops into the pre B cells there is still some existence of this VLA4 interaction of this VLA4 to the VCAM in this stage, but the cells uh, they start to express uh, on the surface the pre B cells they start to express on their surface the uh, IgM molecule and the B cell receptor. So, it is basically it forms the B cell receptor along with the Ig alpha Ig beta subunits. So, these are the Ig alpha Ig beta are the signaling subunits of the B cell receptor along with that they are present along with the IgM molecules the all together they forms the B cell receptors and they start developing the B cell receptor. and of course, they also have the interleukin 7 receptor being expressed on the surface in all these stages they still have the IL 7 receptor uh, on their surface. Now, IL 7 has a very important role to play at this stage as well in the final maturation stage. So, now these cells will then finally develop into the immature B cells they will finally develop into immature B cells they are st still not mature B cells why we will discuss later. So, they will now start losing the adherence. So, now since they were adhered to this surface of the stromal cells now the expression of this VLA4 and VCAM1 goes down. And this down regulation of the VLA4 actually occurs due to the binding of the interleukin uh, 7. So, the IL 7 which is secreted from the stromal cells IL 7 actually binds to the IL 7 receptors to the ILR and this IL 7 IL, um, IL 7 R interaction actually leads to the down regulation of this uh, uh, of these uh, cell addition molecules 
and that would lead to the detachment of the cell from the stromal cell. So, detachment of the pre B cells from the stromal cells and now these cells will be known as the immature B cells. So, these are the immature B cells. Now, these immature B cells are characterized by expression of IgM on their surface along with the Ig alpha, Ig beta, which are the components of the receptor, the B cell receptor. And then finally, this immature, the, these immature B cells, they will finally develop into mature B cells, which will be expressing on their surface both IgM and IgD, immunoglobulin M and immunoglobulin D on their surface. So, now these are the mature B cells. So, these are the mature or the final mature B cells which then enters into the, so now it leaves the bone marrow enters into the circulation and then goes to the uh, peripheral organs and then it can get activated by an antigen and then it can produce the uh, memory B cells as well as the plasma cells. Now, a very, very important step in this whole process uh, is this after, after the formation of this mature B cells, there is another uh, very, very important step which is that uh, these B cells will undergo a quality control check. So, basically uh, they will undergo a check whether this IgM that is being expressed on the surface of the B cell as a part of the B cell receptor, whether this B cell receptors they can actually interact with self antigens or not. So, that means, in all these steps of the B cell development starting from the lymphoid progenitor to the pro B cell to the pre B cell and finally, to the immature B cell, there are stages of development of the heavy and the light chain. So, arrangement of the heavy and the light chains of the antibodies and this heavy chain and light chain rearrangement is completed at the stage of immature B cells. Now, there has to be a check, there has to be a checkpoint because there are many, many chances, there are at least um, uh, 45 percent of chances that there is a fault, there is a there is something wrong in this uh, in this rearrangement process. And if there, there is something goes wrong in this process of rearrangement, then the B cell receptors they can develop affinity for the self antigens. That is the cell, cell surface antigens of the same system, the self system or they can also get uh, affinities, they can also develop some affinities towards some soluble antigens and they can become they which can activate them basically. So, and that, that can actually be dangerous. So, they can if they develop an, uh, an affinity for the self antigens, so that can actually be dangerous. So, in that way these B cells, these immature B cells before they leave the, um, before they leave the bone marrow, they need at least one round of quality check that is whether these anti, anti uh, these antibodies or these receptors they are self reactive or not. So, now if they are self reactive then they will be excluded, if they are not self reactive at all then they will pass the quality control check and then they will go out and uh, they will uh, go to the peripheral organs and then where they will uh, finally, get activated and differentiate into the final um, uh, uh, memory cells and the plasma. So, that is the overview uh, what I uh, tried to give today is the how 
uh, these uh, hematopoietic stem cells they develop into this multipotent progenitor cells from where they develop into lymphoid progenitors and from there they become uh, pro B cells and pre B cells and then immature B cells and on all this process the major uh, major roles that the, the, the major roles are played by the cell addition molecules which try to adhere these cells on the surface of the stromal cells and then we have interleukins, interleukin 7 for example, uh, which helps uh, uh, in this process of development. We will uh, see in our next lecture how or what exactly happens uh, inside the cell that actually leads to the uh, development of the B cells or the maturation of the B cells and uh, development of the immature B cells which expresses the uh, B cell receptor on the surface and the IgM molecule on the surface being expressed in the surface of the cells. So, uh, we end uh, this lecture today and we will be continuing uh, to talk about the B cell maturation in our next lecture. Thank you.